I'm very happy to have this video sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to learn how to make your own website. Is it art or a TV or both? Should you buy the 2022 Samsung frame? Let's check it out. What's up everyone, I'm B the Installer. I have a new 2022 model Samsung frame here in 75 inch and I wanna offer my thoughts on the TV, improvements in 2022, possible setbacks, and then finish with buying advice. Is a Samsung frame an expensive art display or is it a great TV or both? If that sounds good, please make sure to smash the like button when it becomes useful. And if you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel for TV reviews, unboxing, and installation help. And be sure to set the notification bell to all so you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. And question for the day, is the Samsung frame a TV for you and why? If not, what needs to be added in order for it to be on the top of your list? Those sort of comments will help potential buyers, so comment below. This is my first 75 inch or larger Samsung frame. This unit was packaged well and in perfect condition when unboxed. But funny story, we spent seven hours getting this TV. It was one of those drives where you start at the closest store and then make an hour trip to find the stock. But at that store, the only TV had a forklift hole through the box, well, and the TV. So we had to drive another hour and a half to get the TV you see here. So a long day of driving for some videos, so smash the like button. But we finally got the TV home and unboxed while having a bit of fun in the process. The frame comes with feet and actually looks quite nice on them, but pretty pointless since it looks even better on the wall, which is where most people are going to put it. And the One Connect box is a great feature for the TV. Minimal wiring to the TV no matter how many devices you may have. The hub that controls the TV looks identical to 2021 model with four HDMI ports but only one of them is HDMI 2.1 capable to game at 4K at 120 frames per second. While the Samsung 8K models are in their second year having a more updated version of the One Connect box with four HDMI 2.1 ports. While I know most people buying the frame likely don't need top gaming specs on all the HDMI ports, I get some comments that people would like to see more of an aggressive upgrade to this TV. And I'll talk about that in a second because I'm not sure it's necessary. One new addition to the frame is the matte finish. Over the last few years, it seemed like Samsung had been leaning in more with their glossy screens with strong anti-reflective properties. But the frame is a TV, you really don't want a lot of weird side effects from that sort of coating or finish because it can ruin how the art looks. And I think it's a great idea for the frame to have that very matte-like finish, which is definitely a benefit over the 50-inch frame from last year with that glossy look. It really knocks down most ambient light effectively, but if you're in a really super bright room, this matte finish can still be somewhat problematic. The solar cell remote is something I really like. Samsung has perfected the TV remote. Simple to use, but well done. The most common buttons are perfectly placed with the directional pad right above the back button, and then elevated volume and channel buttons are easy to find in daylight or night. Not to mention that you have your most common app buttons to quickly access Netflix, Disney+, Prime Video, and Samsung Plus channels. The battery seems to always be full with the solar panel, and if needed, you can plug it in via the USB-C port. I've had some issues with the remote connecting on this frame. The remote for the Samsung S95B OLED doesn't have any of these issues, so I'll just continue to troubleshoot and see what's going on. When I set the TV up, I had some Bluetooth issues, so maybe it just needs to be replaced. Let me know in the comments if you're having any issues with any Samsung remotes this year. The Tizen OS is pretty solid in its design, but I've noticed it's not very snappy in 2022. I feel that the OS for watching TV should be lightning fast on all TVs with the processing power available, but for some reason it just feels very sluggish when moving around the home screen. But overall, the OS is okay, plenty of apps available if you have the patience moving around, and the Samsung Plus is the best set of free channels offered by a TV company. You can get lost watching content all day and it looks pretty good in resolution for freebie channels. One aspect of the operating software that seems to be much improved is the art mode. It's obviously the biggest draw for this TV and after logging into my Samsung account, my paid subscription was recognized and I had access to all the free art from the art store. Now you don't need to pay monthly as there's a good deal of pics that you can display for free and you can even upload your own pics or manipulate other content and upload it from your phone to the SmartThings app. But if you really want to experience the most out of the Samsung frame, the art in the store seems endless. You can download collections based on different color themes, time periods, style of art, and so on. And again, it all moves faster than previous years. No more waiting for an art piece to set, only to have it exit, to make any sort of adjustments. When displaying a piece of art, you can just press the enter button in order to change the art. 
add to favorites, add a matte border around the piece, which is especially nice for creating some separation around the standard black bezel that is on the frame. And you can even get into the settings and increase the brightness and change the color temp of each pick. So art mode is established as a big benefit of the Samsung frame, but how is it at just being a TV? First, the upside. Besides art mode, the Samsung frame looks quite nice when watching regular cable or standard dynamic range content. This includes sports, news, and most apps like the Samsung Plus. The TV has really good native contrast for a TV that lacks dimming zones. Dimming zones really just help LED TVs like this by darkening the dark parts of the screen while allowing max brightness. And if there's any complaints from the TV side, it's that the Samsung frame just isn't as blinding bright as some of the other Samsung QLED TVs. But for regular cable and even Netflix movies, the frame is more than sufficient and comparable to a pretty solid Sony or Samsung LED TV. But when you switch to movies that are HDR or high dynamic range, the Samsung frame is a a little less than stellar. I went over some of this in the unboxing, but the bright scenes look good. But some of the darker scenes, not fantastic. The frame just doesn't have the punch to allow the near black areas to be visible, so you just don't get as much detail that you would if you had an OLED or a high-end QLED TV. But you really have to think about your use case. Are you going to be watching HDR movies often, or do you just watch cable or apps that don't even display in HDR anyways? Because that's a legit question for most people considering a Samsung frame for the art and general TV watching. It's just not a powerhouse for watching HDR movies on the regular. However, gaming looks pretty fantastic. Call of Duty is a pretty bright game and we didn't get to check out many other titles, but the insanely low input lag when playing 4K at 120 frames per second was very nice. The frame plays like a top gaming TV. It has a pretty standard Samsung game bar that looks like it carried over from 2021. Again, same specs with the one HDMI 2.1 gaming port, 4K at 120, VRR to prevent screen tearing on fast games, instant game mode or ALLM, etc. Not as bright as the top QN90B, so if you're looking for a killer Samsung TV for gaming and the art is sort of a side bonus, there are more powerful Samsungs in the lineup. But gaming is definitely enjoyable, looks quite nice on the frame if you're double checking right before the missus goes out and buys and replaces your gaming TV. And while there isn't a ton to complain about, I did get one disappointing result, and that's on the uniformity of this panel, or dirty screen effect. This is something that I look at on all TVs, and while many people won't see minimal issues with panel uniformity, it can be a turnoff when there are noticeable dark areas, especially if the TV's to be on many hours a day like the Samsung frame. This 2022 frame that I have has worse uniformity than previous year models, and that's disappointing as you can see the blotchy areas and some vignetting in the corners. If you're to watch a hockey game or a scene in a movie where the sky was moving from left to right, you'd likely notice the darker areas and it can get annoying. Now this is just on this TV, your Samsung frame or any TV could have better or worse uniformity, and so it should be a small concern when purchasing a TV. Ratings.com recently uploaded their review and test results also showed similarly bad results on this test. They also noticed the TV is slightly less bright than the 2021 model, but they did note that the matte finish handles reflections much better than the previous frame, and so their overall score on this TV compared to last year is very similar which is good considering that the art mode seems to be much faster and more usable. And that last point should not be understated. The 2021 Samsung frame art mode was snail slow. It was pretty annoying to sit there and wait for the art to change from one to the next or just to add a simple matte to the background. So at the very minimal, if you had to compare last year's frame to this year, I'd happily take slightly less bright TV in 2022 with a great matte finish and much faster art mode over the 2021 model. And if the price is significantly different as of now, then simply wait until Amazon Prime Day where last year Best Buy and other Samsung merchants dropped the frame price by 30% for a few days. You also should see significant discounts around Black Friday. But besides a slower art mode, the 2021 model is fine and my wife loves hers. But maybe harder yet is to compare the Samsung frame against some of the very top TVs on the market in 2022. The LG G2 Gallery Series TV is one that you may be thinking about and is also meant to be mounted similarly on the wall but it is an OLED TV. This gives the G2 individual pixel level control of the light, and to be honest, OLED TVs are quite remarkable. So from a TV side, it is clearly better for watching HDR movies, heck, even regular cable and gaming. But the G2 is more expensive per size, and when you consider displaying art on an OLED TV, many AV enthusiasts would be hesitant to risk potential burn-in on an expensive OLED over time displaying the same picture day in and day out, plus art looks a little bit better on the Samsung frame. 
You also could just compare the frame to the top Samsung LED TVs themselves, where the QN90B or QN95B with the One Connect box is just an all around amazing TV. Extremely bright with fantastic contrast, making it look as OLED like as I've ever seen with far more brightness and no fear of image retention that could potentially happen with an OLED. But these models just have an ambient mode, which is not as nice as the full art mode. And you have HDMI ports in the back of the QN90B in the US model. So maybe if you're looking at a top QLED TV with the One Connect box, and art is sort of a second consideration, I would just go with that QN95B, which is brighter, handles reflections even better than the frame, and is arguably the best 4K LED TV ever. In a slightly more reasonable comparison, my cousin had been looking at a Sony X85J versus the 2021 Samsung frame, and the same thing could be done this year with something like the X80K or X90K, or even the Samsung Q80B or 70B versus the 2022 Samsung frame. And each time I've told my friends and family about the frame and how it's an above average TV with great gaming, and they already know it doubles as a fantastic art piece, almost all people considering the frame went on to buy it. It's very hard to pass up the ability to get a good TV that can double as art day and night. It fits a very specific need, which is to make everyone in the family happy enough to agree to put a TV in the bedroom or get a bigger TV for the living room. The Samsung frame looks very nice and continues to make small improvements year over year. The better contrast along with the matte finish make the frame a powerhouse for watching typical cable sports and most movies. I would love to see the Samsung frame be even better and brighter when watching HDR movies and it would be a huge benefit if they could make each panel without the dirty screen that is present on this unit. But the true purpose of the Samsung frame is to deliver impressive art and at the same time check a lot of the TV watching boxes, making the frame a pretty solid buy for most families. And if you can snag one discounted on Black Friday or another sales price, I highly recommend it as the best dual purpose TV on the market. So are you gonna buy a Samsung frame? If not, let me know in the comments what Samsung needs to do in order to consider the Samsung frame one of your top choices. Please make sure to like the video on your way out, subscribe, ring the notification bell and all that, and just like that, you can be the installer. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace provides you with a powerful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated member-only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Display posts from your social media on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. And you can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts as well. You can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So if you're looking to start your own website, look in the description below, squarespace.com forward slash be the installer, get yourself a free trial, and if you like it, get 10% off your purchase of a domain or website.